Hey, everybody. This is So Many Sequels, your book club for movies. I'm Josh. I'm Garrett. Today on the show, we're talking about Twisters, a sequel to the classic disaster movie Twister, released in 1996. Garrett and David reviewed that last week. Uh, you can go back and listen or watch that if you'd like on our YouTube channel or in your favorite podcasting app. But today on the show, you might notice that we don't have David here, but we do have a guest who is News on Six's own meteorologist, Stephen Narens. Welcome to the show for the, I think, second time, right? Yes, I did one, one of the Marvel movies a couple years ago. You guys had me on, which was super fun, by the way. So thank you for having me back on, yeah, on a topic that like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I might have something to contribute. Yeah, <laughs> weather and yeah. Marvel. We got you there. Yeah, so we'll, we're, we have Steven joining us for this movie, which is super exciting because uh, Twisters obviously has a lot to do with the weather and the science behind it and uh, what we in Oklahoma deal with every spring season, which is severe weather season. And I've noticed just in the past couple of days of seeing people react to Twisters online, a lot of things about, is Oklahoma really like that? Are Oklahomans really like that? <laughs> And sometimes yes, sometimes no. We'll talk about that. But that's why I'm excited about this conversation, because it's also rare that we get to have a movie that feels so personal uh, just to our life experience, I guess. So that's uh, going to be fun. I do want to make sure to remind everybody to subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if you're listening that way. Uh, that stuff really helps us out. We are pushing toward our next subscriber goal of 316 subs on YouTube. Uh, so go do that for us. Uh, check us out there. To get started, though, with how we watch this movie, I feel like it's important to state that Garrett and I uh, had a, a very special invite. Uh, we were invited by you, Stephen, uh, on behalf of the Route 66 AMS uh, NWA chapter, which you very kindly reminded us is not that NWA. It's a different one. <laughs> so could you explain to us a little bit uh, your organization and what it does? Yeah, so um, the AMS, which is the American Meteorological Society, you know, it's just like um, any scientific professional society organization that someone might be involved with in whatever their field is. Um, but it's kind of like the most longstanding meteorological society or most well-known. Uh, and it's just, you know, any meteorologists from throughout the country in all various walks of the meteorological life. It's not just TV people that the large majority of them are not TV people, uh, but it's the TV people. It's the people that work for the National Weather Service or any other private company research, whatever it might be. Uh, and uh, there are local chapters all around the country. And we have uh, a local chapter that's based here in Tulsa. And anyone's welcome to join it. They have a chapter down in Norman you know, based around OU, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, we have our chapter here based in Tulsa and anyone's welcome to join, frankly. You don't even have to be meteorologists. We have people that are weather enthusiasts that we know well that join us as well. And even some folks from Northwest Arkansas uh, that will join us from time to time because they've gone back and forth on having their own chapter out there. Anyways, that's what the AMS is. That's our local chapter here. We have quarterly meetings uh, where we get together and just nerd out about the weather, frankly. And we uh, usually have some speaker come in and talk about uh, any number of different weather related things during the spring. We're probably having someone talk about severe weather, duh. but other times of the year we have people that will come in and talk about fire forecasting and meteorology. We'll have people come in and talk about things like storm chasing or storm research chasing we will talk about winter weather in the winter. We'll talk about things regarding climate change, really anything we think is an interesting topic that a chapter would like to hear about, like to hear an expert tell us more about. Then we try to, a couple times a year, do events as groups also. And so as a few months ago, as we were leading up to this, um, we as a chapter kind of said, you know, it'd be really fun. Like, wouldn't it be fun if we could get everyone together and go see Twisters together? Um, and it was kind of like, yeah, okay, let's do that. Um, and so we, you know, hopped on it. And, and um, Mike Grogan, who's a, a good friend of all of ours and a former coworker of mine, still works here in Tulsa, um, really kind of gung ho and started researching theaters that we could go to and found one that was kind of like the perfect size. And we just went, okay, well, let's, let's do this. And then he also did a lot of legwork and recruiting a, a large group of people to come because, you know, our chapter is relatively small, but he, he did a, a lot of work in recruiting a large group of. Um, people outside the chapter that's like, hey, we're having this. Let's all hang out and, and, and nerd out together about this. And so that's where it kind of uh, 
And then leading up to this, I was talking to you guys. And I was like, well, they should come. Like, the, you guys would love this. So I was really happy that you guys were able to come and enjoyed it, too. Can confirm, we did love we this. We <laughs> loved it. I, Garrett and I both in the car on the way back were like, what other way would I want to watch that, you know? I mean, that's just Big the screen. ideal way. Yeah, surrounded by people who know what they're talking about and also are excited to see just, like, craziness ensue and whatever happens and, and be very excited about it. So it was a ton of fun to be surrounded by a bunch of experts. We appreciate the invitation. Yes. And we're glad to have you here to talk about it. Yeah. Um, Josh, what is this movie we've been talking about actually about? Yeah, let's jump into the synopsis real quick, which uh, I'll read off here. It is a sequel to Twister, but it is more of a standalone sequel. This is not got, you know, you were not talking about Helen Hunt coming back, none of that stuff. Uh, this is its own thing, but there's some callbacks. The synopsis reads, as storm season intensifies, the paths of former storm chaser Kate Carter and reckless social media superstar Tyler Owens collide when terrifying phenomena never seen before are unleashed. The pair and their competing teams find themselves squarely in the paths of multiple storm systems converging over central Oklahoma in the fight of their lives. Um... Which is just a day that ends in Y for many people here in Oklahoma <laughs> during the April May months. Uh, so that's what the movie's about. It's already gotten off to a huge start. We don't need to go too deep into David's typical box office uh, segment, but this is looking to open with eighty million dollars, which is quite a bit above the projections even were. Um, so it's going to be a hot twister summer, I think. We've got a lot of excited people. At the theater, a lot of excited people posting about it on social media. Uh, so do we want to, let me ask you this, Garrett, do we want to start asking some sciencey questions first, or should we just kind of talk about our general thoughts on this movie? Because it can, you, you know, let's talk about the general way. thoughts on this movie. Yeah, let's talk about the general thoughts on this movie, because, um, you know, you mentioned it a little bit of a standalone sequel, mm -hmm. and I think that that is something that people have talked about in some way, shape, or form. And I think that there's, that's the only way this movie could exist, right? You can't do a true sequel. Especially and without I, I have said many, and, and right. not with us anymore. Yes. And so for me, having them be able to have those callbacks, it's in the same state. It makes sense that some of this story would have been happening. And they use a lot of the information that they had. And I thought that was really good. And then they created new characters and, and built something new. The story itself, very similar as far as like what they are kind of doing. Um, trying to get information from a tornado in a crazy way that gets you close to it. Um, but the one thing that this movie I felt like did was not go as disaster route. And they tried to make it a lot more what I felt was realistic to the situation it, to some extent, as far as like the destruction that it causes. And so maybe that's where I have a question for like Steven. Hey, how did you feel about the story compared to the first one? And, and, from a fan standpoint and maybe from a meteorological standpoint, like, you know, how close and realistic were the science at these both movies? Um, yeah, I mean, as you said, story-wise, there's quite a few elements that are, like, kind of transplanted from the first one to the second one as far as what the overarching theme of what's happening is. And that's fine. I mean, I don't think you had to, in my mind, I didn't think you needed to reinvent the wheel here anyways. Um, and I agree with you guys that, you know, doing just kind of a standalone sequel was the best way to do it. Um, and I think it bared out. I think I, that that showed by the time you finished the movie going like, yeah, that was the right decision. Um, story wise, I think I liked the story overall just from a pure uh, enjoyment, entertainment standpoint before you get into any of the science of it. I think it was just an enjoyable movie, a good summer blockbuster. Um, you know, it's. Anyone can go see it. I think there's like, you know, one curse word <laughs> in the movie. You know, like anyone can go see it. If there wasn't a curse word in a movie involving tornadoes, then that's <laughs> correct. Yes, correct. Yes. If there hadn't been curse words when you're in the middle of a tornado, that would be incredibly unrealistic. So, yeah, um, I think, yeah, just purely enjoyment standpoint, it was good. And I was telling you guys before, and truth be told, quite a bit of the science in it was pretty good. Obviously... It's a Hollywood movie and liberties are taken and there are some things that are not true or things that are, you know, theoretically maybe are possible, but are very, very unrealistic. It's a movie. So that was going to happen. But when they, the science that they did use when they were trying to, you know, 
show that they, they knew what they were talking about was truthfully pretty sound. Um, I was trying to think the other day, I was like, was this actually more scientifically sound than the first one? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, part of me is like that almost is a hard comparison to make. Because the first twister was all, first twister was almost thirty years ago, and of course that's a, a an enormous amount of time between the two in lice in general. Mm -hmm. But in the scientific meteorological field, so much has changed since the first one came out. So it's almost hard to compare about oh which one's more accurate because I mean they did their research in the first one also, but <laughs> the field of meteorology has come so far from the mid nineties to now that it's it's hard to make the comparison but they did do some pretty good scientific research on this they spent a lot of time going down to um because i've seen a lot of posts and pictures about this and i knew some of this um as they were doing kind of the pre-production of the movie and this goes back a year year and a half ago they went down to norman you know kind of the weather epicenter and um talked to the folks from the National Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center and the, and the Severe Storms Lab um, and, you know, picked their brains about a lot of weather-related things. And not only that, but they did a lot of legwork there. I've seen Rick Smith, who's one of the, the head folks at the National Weather Service in Norman, um, that I've, you know, that I've gotten a chance to know going back to when I was in college and, and since then, has posted a lot of pictures in recent days of kind of like, here's all the stuff that I couldn't share over the last year. Um, about all of the with pictures with Daisy Edgar Jones and Gwen Pound, Anthony Ramos, and, and all the other, and Isaac and the director Isaac Chung and, and a lot of other people that were there learning from them, and not only just the, the like, hey, here's where we work, here's what we do, and hopefully you guys make this work, but like, no, they sat in on like gave them an actual storm spotter class, and they were there like Glenn Powell, and Daisy Edgar Jones, front and center, front row, sitting there listening and taking notes and showing them some of the stuff that Severe Storms Lab does with their research when they go storm chasing. And I believe Rick said that they actually took them on an actual storm chase one day. I remember listening to uh, the Glenn Powell was on, you know, he didn't have a chance to come on our podcast, but he did get a chance to talk to Stephen Colbert on The Late Show. Which was kind and of He did really. say that after, <laughs> yes, it was. You know, wait, I, you know, if he's going to share some time, I'm, I'm glad that he could make time for Colbert. He really needs yeah. it. So, um... <laughs> If I remember right, he said that after the movie was done, then they were allowed to go on a storm chase because they couldn't do it for, like, you know, insurance purposes right. while they were shooting the movie. They were like, yeah, don't go. <laughs> he also mentioned something about um, an actual tornado coming through while they were shooting the movie and kind of ruining the set and stuff. And so mm -hmm. it, it's cool to have that kind of... Uh, you know, association. And it's nice to hear that they have done their research and spent some time with a lot of the experts and had that opportunity. Cause I feel like, you know, again, t tornadoes are in such a area. And I think mm -hmm. outside of that area, it's just terrifying to think about. And so, um, you know, getting the, the knowledge behind it and understanding it really is terrifying. <laughs> um, is, it, it helps really with their performance. Yeah, I do want to point out also, um, before I lose track, there's a, a million other things to talk about, but they did, I mean, they came around to, uh, as far as I know, all of the TV stations here in Tulsa and in Oklahoma City to pick yeah. our brains as well. This goes back to, like I said, about a year and a half ago. I wish I could remember who. I can't, I'm going blank on their names now, but a couple of the folks that were production assistants, set design folks, they came, because I worked News on 6, and they came to News on 6 one day. Um, yeah. to just chat about it. And I probably sat and talked to them for an hour and a half, just about any number of different severe weather related things. Um, and you know, they had plenty of questions about, you know, what's this, what's that. And if we highlighted this, if we highlighted that, um, and I know that they went, I went around to, like I said, I think every other station kind of did the same thing and picked our brains and we gave them things that, yeah, this would be cool if you included this and, and, and that sort of deal. And I think that, bared out and helped as well um of course you know how it is it we all wanted to be included in the movie right and of there were only a couple included whatever that's how it works N none of us are yeah. are losing sleep over it that's how it works but um but yeah the, just to reiterate the point that like they did their due diligence like it was pretty when i was talking when i talked to the folks that i talked to I mean, it was pretty clear to me early on that they were, um, and their director in particular, were very dedicated to like, we want this to be good. We want it to be a good movie, but we don't want it 
to be like we're making stuff up. We want there to be sound science in this. And we all came away, I, I know I did, being very much appreciative that they took the time to do that. That's awesome to hear because, I, I mean, going back to before we even knew much about it when Twisters was officially announced first, my first thought was, oh, man, it's just going to be Sharknado. And I don't want that. Please don't ruin the legacy. But um, it's great to hear that not only did they get a lot of things right, but they did so because they worked with you guys at the, uh, at the TV stations and the National Weather Service and actually talking to people who know what they're talking about um, when they so easily could have just Hollywooded the whole thing, I guess. I came out really enjoying it. I had a blast as a fan of the original. And, uh, you know, we don't talk about it a lot on here, but Garrett and I, and even David as well, have background in news working in digital. So we've been in the room, essentially, when severe weather things are happening. So... As one of my former colleagues said, we know enough to be dangerous, but not enough to really know what we're talking about. But even I could appreciate the things that I noticed were more accurate in this one than the others. And then hearing you guys talk about it afterward was just even more fun. I felt like I was in a podcast just standing in that circle we had talking about the movie. But there's so much to enjoy about it. I would love to know... Is it possible to tame a tornado? Would this polymer thing work? But what I think I really want to know is, are people trying to do this? Are there real efforts being made to stop tornadoes in their tracks? To my knowledge, no, not really. I mean, I know there's always, that's a hypothetical that like, yeah, then you, wouldn't it be great if we could do this, right? Um, to my knowledge, and now I'm not going to pretend that I know every sure. research project that's ongoing and, you know, I, there very well could be, but more than likely not, because to be honest, when we talk about, you know, what things are realistic and not realistic, that's clearly one of the things in the movie that's not very realistic. Would it be great if that could happen? Obviously. But it's not something that's very realistic, and it's not something that I'm aware of is an ongoing thing that's trying to be done. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's a liberty that's taken, sure. for sure. But I mean, it's that's that's an important plot point in the movie. So you get why they did it. And also, again, it's a movie. So you knew stuff like that was going to be in there. Having said that, I, I have heard of and seen things in movies like this that were far more uh, insane than that. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so even though is it realistic? No. But it's also something that you're like, well, I mean, if it could be done, that sure would be great, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah, to me, it seems like a really interesting part of the story. Like, yeah, you're right. Movie's going to take liberties and do what they can with it. And I think this is just a really interesting aspect to add. It's a really good question and, you know, it's a fun thing to experiment with, even if it's not necessarily true. You know, nobody walks away thinking, wow, they really pulled it off or whatever, you know. Right. That's not kind of the takeaway. The takeaway is more the experience. And so I think... What intrigues me about this is they have Daisy Edgar Jones' character, Kate, is a storm chaser there at the beginning and then goes through an experience and things change for her and works at the National Weather Service there and then is brought back in and then she meets Glenn Powell, Tyler Owens, who is this wild and out kind of YouTube star who just... The tornado wrangler. Tornadoes, anchors himself down into the ground and rides a tornado, right? Okay. You're a meteorologist. You've done some storm chasing. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Have you ever been in a truck that drives into a tornado and anchors into it for the ride? Like, is that some, I mean, come on. Is that, we have, we, you work with storm chasers. I've seen them. Are they out there doing that? Is that what we're doing with these? The storm chasers that I'm affiliated with or that maybe work for our, our TV station, no, they don't do that. I will say, though, Good answer. They, where they drive that from, um, and again, I have also never personally experienced that, and I'm not sure that I ever would want to, <laughs> but I'm relatively certain, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that they derived a lot of that from the Timmer and their team. Because that's kind of sort of what they've been doing the last several years. Obviously, it's not exactly what they're doing. But that's kind of what he's been doing with his, you know, TIV tornado intercept vehicle and the, that big old tank. That's kind of what they've been doing. So I'm assuming that that's where they derived a lot of that thought from, even if they didn't take it straight from him. I mean, you know, 
Reed's done some of that and he's still here with us, you know, and so it, it's one of those that you're like, well, they, there was a reason that they chose to do that. Is it the most realistic or smart thing to do? No. But is it something that theoretically could be possible? I suppose so. If the ground is, a lot of us were kind of talking about that after seeing the movie being like, yeah, how soft is that ground that they were drilling into? You know, right. like the realistic portion of that. And it is like, well, the truck moved. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but I do think that that was derived from something that has already kind of sort of been happening. So again, is it that realistic or smart to do? No. But <laughs> yeah, I guess the major difference got- was that this was like a Dodge Ram. <laughs> and not a tank. <laughs> right, exactly. That's where it's kind of like, actually, you know, what reading them have been doing, you could make a case is safer because they're in like an armored right. tank, more or less, when they're doing that, as opposed to just a windows open. <laughs> I feel like in this situation, <laughs> truck, the, the tornado would have just taken the cab and left the screws in the dirt. <laughs> more than likely, a tornado of the, of the magnitude that they were driving right. into. Yes, that would have been a much more likely uh, outcome of that. Um, I want, I, I, so I watched the first one to, um, prepare myself for this one. And I noticed that I felt like the special effects were honestly pretty good for 1996. Um, mm-hmm. how well do you think the special effects in this movie, um, really showcased how storms form and how tornadoes form? Did it look real to you? Yeah I, yeah, I thought it looked pretty good. V- visually speaking, um, pretty good. And even a few times when they're having their before the storm moments where um, Kate's doing her Bill Paxton thing and watching the storm form and Tyler's doing it too. And watching the structure of storms. I, I was watching going, okay, it's not like they had all the clouds in the wrong spot and everything was just like, nope, that's not how it works. I think it was pretty good overall. Now, of course, liberties are taken again as they're driving up and within 10 seconds, the tornado's there out of nowhere. Like, no, it doesn't usually happen that way. Right. I mean, every tornado is di- different. Some happen very, very rapidly and others don't. So, I mean, that's not the biggest stretch in the world. But um, there's certainly liberties taken, again, with how quickly these tornadoes were happening and how quickly they also dissipated and all that sort of thing. But overall, again, I felt like the visuals... Just from a, even taking out the science of it, the visuals just alone on themselves, I thought were pretty good. And I do think that there was, again, some actual, at least from what I could tell, scientific thought put into the, how they were, the structure of the storms looked and how they talked about the structure of the storms too, when you heard them start kind of firing off all the, the lingo that they were firing off during the movie. Another thing that we see in both movies, um, just in different ways, that I'm curious if there's any um, truth to is the, the chasers all kind of converge on one area and that makes sense to me, but is it a real competitive, almost race like thing where they're trying to beat each other? The I, story? You know, that's, I think it is for some people. I think that that is, that's probably an exaggerated element. I mean, there's some, I, I think there's some truth to it, but I think that's exaggerated to the point that, if you ever happen to be out chasing, let's say you guys went chasing with someone for whatever reason, with a prof- um, and you happen to be in that spot where it's the storm of the day and everyone has converged on that storm, I think they may have done a decent job of nailing the chaoticness of it all and what we call chaser convergence, where there's too many cars and narrow area and all that sort of thing. And I think there is some competition, but what I was going to say is that my general feeling is, at least from the standpoint of the people that are there, that are the research folks or the people that are just chasing kind of on their own. Maybe they're not chasing for a TV station or they're chasing for a specific company. They're just chasing to chase. They're all more likely, at least in my opinion, enjoying the experience together, so to speak, all nerding out together in a sense. Like they all want to get to the good spot, but there may end up being 40 of them. I'm just picking a number, but a huge group of them congregated to one spot watching the storm. And they're likely all going to be nerding out together. It's not going to be, I'll get out of my way. I want to get the better shot. Like they're all going to be kind of nerding out together. There is competition aspect. I think for the folks that are doing this for a job, Um, but it's still not, I, the whole, they're all chasing down the same road and cutting each other off and that sort of thing is probably exaggerated. I don't know. At least I hope that's not happening. I, but I don't think that kind of competition, that is pretty heightened. I don't think that there's that level of competition actually happening there. 
but they still did, I think, a good job of highlighting, you know, kind of the chaotic nature of what's happening out there, especially when there's so many people chasing, because that's kind of how it is now. There's always a lot of people out chasing, and it can lead to different sorts of issues in different sorts of ways. Um, so I think that's probably was exaggerated some, um, but I get what they were kind of trying to set up there, at least in the scope of the movie itself. You know what I really enjoyed about this movie was the, I felt like it was really intense. Uh, you know, it didn't rely solely on just seeing a tornado and it gradually getting builder or bigger and bigger. There are a lot of moments where you see a fully formed tornado and it's, you know, doing its thing, which is beautiful and terrifying at the same time. But what I liked is that they, when they put you in it, it was so, it felt distorted. Like the rain was there and then you could like see the wind. And that is not a, you know, visually they did a good job of that. And there were moments where I just felt like I needed to cover. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it was just so intense. So how do you feel like they showed those moments? And then uh, biggest question of all in many of these, these tornadoes, right? They're lifting up people, sucking them up hundreds of miles an hour into the air. They're picking up all kinds of semi trucks. Is that realistic? Is that a thing that happens? And, and like, is that, I mean, obviously you've probably never seen someone sucked up by a tornado, but is that something that it might look like if plausible? I uh, truthfully, I mean, yeah, we've seen tornadoes flip semis over and, and well, I mean, do you think about it? It's like, well, the tornado can, completely obliterated building i'm fairly certain they can overturn you know a semi and, and flip you know it's so like that's absolutely not only plausible but like has happened like those are things that have happened so there there's not a whole lot there that was um like oh, okay that's like come on now that wouldn't actually happen like no a lot of those things i mean the wind is a very powerful thing an underratedly powerful thing i uh, maybe not underrated for the folks of oklahoma because we're all well aware of it but it's just one of those things that you don't really understand the power of it until you experience it right and uh, it, it i uh, so to that point a lot of that i think is honestly fairly realistic obviously again as we've said over and over it's a movie some things are exaggerated but that was i i, I think it's things that people could actually experience and i agree with you that the, the experience was pretty uh, immersive um in in a in a good way in a good movie way as far as being like wow this is this is kind of intense you know um and i'd even seen you know we talk about you know, as, as entertaining as the movie is that is but before the movie before we got to see it and when some of the folks that i knew that had seen kind of the pre-screenings and stuff i had heard a few of them saying hey look this movie is great like it's very entertaining and all this but just a fair warning, if you're someone that has gone through one of these, we talk about the people that have gone through the big tornadoes of recent years here in Oklahoma or anywhere, just you know, fair warning here, you might have, this might be a little intense for you if you've gone through one of these. And I thought I was like, okay, that's a good thing to tell people because you know this is a movie we're there to see it for entertainment value and it does a very good job of that. But you know, the people have lived through these kind of things and unfortunately have been killed by these kind of things. And for the people to have lived through that, it's an entirely different experience. Having said that, I still feel like going back to how they did it, how the, the visuals of it all, I think they did a good job of capturing that. And going into the scenes where you're seeing kind of the aftermath of some of these tornadoes, I think they did also a good job of capturing the aftermath. Not that they didn't do that well in the first one, because I think they did too, but of showing what's left behind now granted does every tornado just completely wipe out town like these no of course not but um i i felt like they also you know kind of covered that visually pretty well as well yeah i had that was something that stood well i wanted to touch on that as the kind of warning aspect to it because i had the thought toward the final act or so of the film when we see that it takes place in el reno oklahoma as an Oklahoma, and I'm aware that that is a town that has suffered pretty badly from tornadoes in the past. You, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Stephen, but I believe that in 2013, they had the widest tornado recorded on record, right? Mm -hmm. So seeing the El Reno signs and seeing the massive tornado coming even made me flinch for a second. Because that's a real town where people really have faced these things. So it could be very anxiety-inducing for people who've, who've been through a scary situation. Well, yeah, and even um, 
stored. No, go for it. Uh, even, you know, it's store chases. You talk about the, the people that have done this their whole career. It's that El Reno tornado, which was the widest on record in 2013. That storm killed several storm chasers. Um, people that were veteran, they were uh, research uh, storm chasers. They were with the Twist X project. Um, and it was Tim Samaras, Paul Samaras, Carl Young. And then there were the other people killed that tornado as well. That tornado was so unbelievably erratic. They knew what they were doing. Like it, this wasn't a, oh, they, what were they doing? They got, they should have never been there. They knew what they were doing. And it was so erratic that it caught them off guard and unfortunately cost them their lives. But to, to that point, yeah, I mean, I've had that same thought too. When Al Reno comes on the screen, you're like, boy, like someone that's maybe, maybe not even a storm chaser, but from Al Reno might look and go, oh man, this might start feeling too real very quickly. But that's part of the movie experience, right? Is you want it to be something that feels real and doesn't feel totally made up. And, you know, like Josh said, you're like sharknado y, where you're like, okay, this is just totally insane. Like what's happening here? So, I mean, yeah, it, I think that added as much as it could, you know, cause some people to be like, oh boy, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this just because they've experienced it. I, it adds a, another real factor to the movie. Uh, it, the one thing I think we all talked about this too after the movie is that we talked about maybe a few elements that were less real. The idea that uh, people in Al Reno or the folks early in the movie at the rodeo would get just totally like, or just out living their happy lives and like all of a sudden a tornado comes out of the blue. It's, Clearly, that's not realistic. In Oklahoma, of all places, if there's going to be a tornado threat day, the town's probably, all the events have been canceled. Everyone's already at home. Like, obviously, that was probably one of the most unrealistic things of the film yeah. is that yeah, Oklahoma, as three, of all people, were a con yeah, up as, guard. As three people who are born and raised in Oklahoma our whole lives, if we knew that there was an outbreak like of tornadoes that they portray in this movie, things would be canceled. I will say, we will still be watching from our porches. And so there is a level of stupidity and crazy that we would still show. Yeah. But we wouldn't be out and about having festivals. And so, like, you know, the balance there is needed. And one other thing to add on to that is there is one person in this movie uh, who I think is at the rodeo maybe scene where uh, she's kind of like brushing it off. The tornado warnings are always false. Um, there's a lot of that. <laughs> like, those people do exist. And when we know that there's an outbreak coming and, you know, events get canceled ahead of time, there's a lot of people who are out there saying, ah, what are we canceling for? I've been that person before, as much as I respect the weather. Sometimes you're just like, really? Uh, so there's some truth to all those various varieties of reactions, too, which I appreciate a little bit. I also think this movie did a good job of showing the, some of the aftermath and the reality of that. Because, you know, the tornado is a destructive thing. And, and in the first movie, it was built up on the tornado and the bigness of it. And, yeah, it was being destructive. And you saw Wakita get destroyed. But you didn't spend a lot of time there. And so this movie, uh, we haven't really talked about a lot of the performances yet. But um, Daisy Edgar Jones and Glenn Powell at the, and Anthony Ramos are the main three characters. Um, Kate, Tyler, and Javi. And they are out chasing, you know... Daisy's on Javi's team. Uh, they're out kind of competitive. And then over time, they learn about each other and then, then the stories shift. But, um, oh my God, I totally lost my train of thought. Josh, you got something? I'll, I'll edit this part out after. <laughs> I love it when that happens. No, 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 it's fine. Um, there's, I think where you're going with it is there is just a heavier focus on destruction in this movie than we saw before. Yes. And uh, I would love to hear from Steven on how the destruction was portrayed. In the beginning, I can remember we get to see a wide shot of a storm track path in the in the dirt. We see what happens in one of the small towns, I can't recall, but but we saw the, a neighborhood destroyed. H how did that look to you? Again, I think they did a pretty good job with that. Yeah, that when you, whichever one it was where you can see the aerial shot of the track afterwards, I mean, it's, I looked at that, I was like, I've seen scenes like that before after some of our big tornadoes here in Oklahoma um, from our helicopter any other helicopter view um, after a big tornado and so to me I was like that yeah I mean that did not seem unrealistic at all sadly the damage aftermath stuff they did in some of the towns I thought they did a pretty good job of handling it and kind of what the aftermath is there and as you guys mentioned as far as the characters themselves well, after one of those first tornadoes that happens and you see the characters kind of in the aftermath helping out. Yeah. And that's when you start to see some character dynamics shift a little bit when you see some character motivations going, oh, okay. 
which I thought just from a movie standpoint, I thought that was pretty interesting that they did that. I felt like that separated it away from the first Twister when you started seeing going, oh, wait a minute. I was mm-hmm. rooting for this character, but I should have been rooting for this character. You know, that kind of deal. It did. Um, yeah. I thought th- I thought that was just from a movie standpoint, I thought that was a good choice. Um, but, it, but yeah, the the um, aftermath damage wise, again, I thought they did a pretty good job of portraying, unfortunately, kind of what it's like in those in those when those towns particularly just get devastated like that. I thought they did a good job. My immediate thought was, you know, right after the tornado happens, like, we got to get there to help. And my immediate thought was like, okay, but that's not actually what happens because what happens is when that happens, the folks that are the actual emergency officials really need to just lock down the town so they can get to people and there's not just all these random folks coming in that probably have good intentions to help, but can just cause things to be kind of more chaotic in the aftermath. So immediately when that happened, I was like, okay, uh, this is being played up here because that's not what would happen. But to that point, almost immediately, I remember that happened in one of the scenes, one of the movies, and then there's, whether it's a news reporter or someone saying, well, you know, so they've enforced a curfew for all the emergency people can be here. And I was like, well, they just refuted me immediately. So um, overall, again, I think that was, they did a good job of showing what these tornadoes can do and the kind of destruction that's left behind and in the human impact of it without being too over the top. I think they did a good job of actually handling it pretty well. All right. That is going to do it for part one of our Twisters review with News on 6 meteorologist Stephen Narens. We will have a second part coming out later this week where we're going to focus more on the movie itself and kind of what we thought about it. Uh, so be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, so many sequels on YouTube and you can also subscribe in your favorite podcasting app however you choose to watch the show.